Okay, you can hear me, you can see my screen now? Yes. Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, today I'm going to present a comprehensive approach to creating an appropriate architecture typology that's based on uh, earthen material. And before I will do so, I will move through a quick review for some principles, goals and objectives uh, of modern earth construction. And then I will make an evaluation to the latest practice to assess how far we or close we realize these goals and objectives. Okay, uh, about 200 years ago, there was a, a, a brilliant French architect called Francois Cointreau, who dedicated most of his life searching uh, developing and promoting a new technique of using earth in construction to avoid the need of any other materials, even like stone. He created what's so-called uh, baiser de terre, which uh, is well known now with the name of rammed earth. Quantru was convinced uh, with the fact that locals have the full right to have quite efficient uh, technique enabling them to secure healthy and affordable houses. And then after uh, about 100 years later, there was another uh, legend Egyptian architect, Hassan Fathi, who also dedicated all his life to the same goal. Fathi revealed to the whole world that earth material could play a crucial role in providing healthy and affordable houses all over the world. He fought a longer battle to restore confidence in this material viability for construction once again. And both of them believed that this type of construction could, should be accessible to all, both by the ease of its implementation and by uh, its eco economy. And now, after hundreds of conferences held and uh, tens of years passed and thousands of research papers carried out and meetings and workshops, did we really kept uh, or achieved the goals of uh, those two uh, legend architects, did we deviate from the root? I'm sorry to say, uh, unfortunately, yes, for some extent. Um, this, is, this is my opinion, I will say why. Because when we, we find this statistic, this is a, a very recent statistic, says that we have about 150 million people living in the street without a shelter. And we have 1.6 billion people live, living in housing that is not suitable for human uh, habitation at all. <laughs> and this is totally against what uh, they believed all, their, uh, all over their uh, lives. I wonder how we fail to secure uh, proper houses for uh, those people, and also how we fail to secure proper roofs for them. These images showing uh, a camp for Syrian refugees was held in uh, the south southeast part of Turkey. They uh, constructed the uh, the shelters with uh, concrete blocks, and they didn't find an appropriate material for the roofing. They they used. Uh, tents. This is, this makes me to ask a question: Is it is it an affordable earth construction? Is it really affordable technique? Uh, the figures astonishing me. When we find that uh, uh, rammed uh, the uh, square meter of uh, rammed earth construction costs about between uh, two thousand. Uh, uh, $2,200 uh, to $3,000 uh, per squ just square meter? Is it, is it an architecture for rich or what? Uh, I have been working in this field for more than 30 years now. And we, 
uh, during this year's time, I developed a formula to calculate the cost of producing, to, uh, to produce uh, the uh, compressed stabilized earth block. And I was asked by the Saudi government in uh, uh, last March uh, to apply this formula of, uh, to calculate the cost of producing uh, compressed earth, this material, compressed earth block, in a place called El Ola. And when we applied our formula and we uh, feed it with all the uh, basic information regarding the basic elements influencing the, uh, the cost, we ended up that we could produce the thousand of uh, these uh, uh, bricks with the amount of 474 uh, Saudi reals. And this is uh, about 52% less than the conventional or the equivalent uh, fire the brick at this area. And again, when we, when we applied uh, the same uh, formulas and equations uh, to uh, another place in Egypt, in Aswan, and very recently we did this uh, calculation uh, two months ago, we ended up that we could again reach a, a considerable amount of uh, reduction in cost. I'm talking about the, uh, the material itself. We reached about 42% uh, reduction in cost to the equivalent fired brick. So the problem, it is not uh, related to the material itself. So uh, what is the problem? There is a missing uh, economical aspect here. There is a paradox, really. Uh, when we uh, we think, and, and yesterday, uh, most of the presentation says that we are dealing with the, uh, a, a most affordable material. It is widely, uh, widely uh, uh, available and it's very cheap and costs nothing and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. So, so why, why we reach it to the point that it causes uh, these figures I mentioned to you? Um, there is something missing. Most of the uh, applications we saw yesterday and we saw everywhere in, on, over the internet, they don't know the fact that the ceiling itself may cost about 60% to 75% of the total cost of the structure system. So it doesn't make any sense to have just uh, a wall of earthen material and then you construct your, uh, your ceiling and the other elements of your structure with another different materials. And you will never achieve a, a considerable uh, dec decreasing or uh, uh, you will never, you will never uh, have a good saving for the total cost by just replacing the uh, wall material. Uh, and, say, and then you say, okay, I, I, I built an economical, uh, efficient building. And I, I really wonder when I saw uh, some uh, bracks uh, using reinforced concrete roofs, uh, reinforced concrete roofs uh, uh, over the uh, earthen walls, and that's it. And some of them are using both of reinforced concrete elements uh, and mix it with the steel elements. By the way, this building, in, it, it is in Africa, and I have a project running now uh, in Nigeria, and I know well that this type of uh, structure costs a lot for them because they are forced to import these materials from outside countries. And even some of them, they are uh, using uh, sophisticated uh, space thrusts made of wood. And for the uh, extreme, some of uh, Brax showing that um, the walls is just uh, the only element which uh, composite of the uh, earth material. Uh, there is a steel structure and the, uh, there is a, a, a flat slab of uh, reinforced concrete for the roofing system. Oh my God. So how, how could they achieve um, 
uh, some saving or uh, affordability. Okay, to be close to this uh, point, also recently we made an evaluation for uh, a prototype we designed for housing in, in, uh, in Egypt. And we, uh, we made uh, uh, three alternatives for this uh, prototype. The first alternative, we designed it with the full uh, reinforced concrete skeleton. And, uh, and we used uh, uh, backed red picks for walls. And the second alternative, we used the uh, uh, load bearing uh, backed uh, red bricks. And we, uh, uh, the ceiling, we used uh, uh, precast ribs of, pre, uh, of uh, uh, precasted uh, reinforced concrete. And the third uh, option, we used, we didn't use any uh, concrete elements at all. We used only uh, bricks, uh, red bricks. And, and here, okay, for sure, we didn't use uh, stabilized or compressed earth block yet, but we, we are com uh, comparing the system of construction. For the first alternative, we found, we, we got this result. We found that uh, the square meter costs one, 1,370. And for the second one costs 102, uh, 1,200 Egyptian pound. And the third one uh, costs us uh, 855 only. This shows you that when we moved from the uh, concrete skeleton to use the uh, bearing walls, the uh, cost saving is starting to reveal. We achieved in the beginning, we achieved in the second choice, we achieved uh, 12%, uh, percent, almost 12.5% reduction of four cost. And for when we use a monolithic material bearing wall, uh, and uh, domes and vaults for the roofing system, we achieved uh, about 38% uh, uh, in uh, uh, reduction for cost. And when we, uh, we, we consider this figure to above mentioned uh, uh, the cost of producing uh, the compressed earth block in Saudi Arabia and Aswan, we, we, if we join it together, we may reach to have a reduction, maybe reaching uh, 50%. It means that we could construct a, a new construction with earth material, but with modern application of earth material with almost half price. This is the answer of why the, uh, uh, it is not affordable when I showed you the new uh, uh, practices uh, uh, in the beginning. On the other hand, this technique, most of you yesterday said, uh, this technique, uh, it is the most old technique and it is widely spread in old communities and uh, it was uh, very uh, uh, popular and vernacular and so on, so on, so on. Uh, and we, we, we took this technique fro between, from the hands of the locals and our rule, uh, should be only to develop uh, the material and the uh, process, not uh, and back it again to them to, to be sure that it would be proper for the new construction, but not to complicate it. We should uh, enab enabling it, not complicating it. It doesn't make any sense to use precast, big, big precast pieces of rammed earth in construction and use uh, sophisticated tools to do uh, so. What earth construction can do for locals? As I told uh, now, those people used to solve their uh, problems and to uh, build without any intervention from any professionals since long, long time ago, thousands of years ago. And and, uh, uh, and now, when we d develop uh, these techniques regarding the material uh, durability and so, we, we should enable them again 
to participate within the construction process uh, by make it easy and affordable for them. So I think modern uh, uh, earth construction uh, should be adhere or uh, committed to this goal. Uh, and what, what is can do uh, and need uh, really, it, uh, I think modern uh, earth construction mean to develop the practice for, from the uh, vernacular, uh, vernacular primitive, as most of you presented yesterday and some of you uh, presented today, the Adobe technique, the Adobe, to be a professional reliable. And what about the material? We need to uh, develop the material from non-engineering, not controlled. Most of you yesterday presented the uh, damages uh, 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 affecting these materials uh, from weathering, from uh, water, uh, underwater, and so on, so to be an engineered with uh, controlled properties. Uh, the, this figure uh, to the right shows us a latest uh, uh, research done by one of my students in uh, Fatah Sultan Mehmet University, and he will present his paper uh, after me, uh, maybe fourth presentation or something like that, on uh, uh, compressed earth uh, samples. And you can uh, observe here, and you can notice that the, uh, the, all these uh, the samples are acting the same under uh, compression force. The curve, the curve is almost identical. And this is what we really mean by controlled properties. We need the material to acting according to our expectations. And this, this is what we mean by to become an engineering, engineered material. Most of you maybe know that we have almost 12 uh, different techniques of using earth in construction. Uh, but among all these techniques, we have just two techniques. Uh, those two techniques were uh, uh, that is scalable. Uh, they are uh, uh, ready to be developed. Uh, and they have big machinery market all over the world and can be subjected to engineering codes and uh, worldwide spread it and have public acceptance and have a modern look and subjected for uh, to scientific researches and can achieve higher mechanical properties and can achieve higher hygienic properties also. Those two techniques is uh, the stabilized rammed earth walls and the compressed stabilized earth blocks. And uh, there, are, there are common advantages of those two, uh, both uh, two techniques. They are saving money, they are saving energy, best as thermal regulator, and I'm going to explain this point uh, later. And they are humidity regulator. They, uh, they have uh, water and rain resistance. They are durable for centuries. They are recyclable. They, they, uh, they, can, uh, they have uh, zero waste because they are to fully recyclable and low carbon emission and flexible for all levels of investment. Earthquake resistance does not need special infrastructure as site. Uh, they, they are fire resistance. They are acoustic insulation. They have low water consumption. They are not uh, toxic, a tool for community development and simple technology, easy for know-how transfer, on-site production, polymorphic. This is the, uh, those are the uh, most common uh, advantages of those uh, uh, both two techniques. But for sure, each one has its own advantage and disadvantage. Starting with the stabilized rammed earth, what are the advantages of this technique? The major advantage of it, that it achieves, achieves high levels of 
aesthetics. It's really wonderful. It has a wonderful appearance, especially we when we add some uh, coloring uh, ox uh, oxids and uh, when the uh, natural soil becomes uh, different in colors and so on. So it gives us a, a, an appearance like a marble or something. Um, and it is very uh, quick uh, in application because you are casting uh, big uh, sections uh, uh, at once, but there is a special disadvantage. St still uh, needs to be uh, treated for this technique. The first and the most um, important deficiency of this technique, it is impossible to uh, maybe, okay, it, un until now it is impossible. Maybe later on it would be treated, but it is impossible to make a test for random sample. You cannot, take a random sample of a wall and go to the laboratory and to test it under uh, the labor laboratory uh, uh, test uh, uh, equipment. And it is too difficult to make on-site quality control because uh, at the moment you uh, remove the form, you will, uh, you will have the, sample, uh, the, the produced uh, piece of wall. So you cannot control during uh, the process, you cannot uh, control how much it is compacted, how much it is fully uh, homogeneous in, uh, in material, regarding the material, and so on. And it is not suitable for curved roofs. Remember what I told you in the beginning. I told you, if you would like really to, to reach the maximum uh, uh, cost effectiveness and the maximum reduction of cost, you have to use a monolithic material. You have to use this material, the earthen material, within the roof, uh, roofing system also, roofing elements. But this technique, it is, not a, a, it is not allowing you easily to have these curved roofs because curved roofs re, uh, needs you to connect the roof with the uh, uh, walls. Uh, and most of these uh, structures uh, built by round earth, uh, it's not uh, easy to do it. And most of them needs a ring beam. Again, we will go to uh, the uh, reinforced concrete material. And not easy for curing, curing process. If you can notice here, we have a, a, a column of round earth fully covered with plastic sheet this column uh, uh, produced by uh, a soil mixed with uh, 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 lime as a stabilizer and lime imposing a curing condition, a humid curing condition. This is why you, you will find uh, the uh, a b a big pieces of walls covered with a huge amount of plastic sheets. And not easy uh, uh, for uh, requires high skill for, uh, of labels. If, if you really would like to have this neat surface, you need a, a, a skilled labor to do it. And also has, uh, has uh, some limitations on forming because it, it depends on the use of uh, the, uh, this technique. It is about casting a material into uh, wooden or uh, metal uh, forms. Uh, so uh, as long as these uh, metal forms are uh, straight line uh, and uh, not custom made, as long as you are saving the cost. But if you are going to have some curved uh, walls or something like that, you will increase the uh, construction cost. And also it is not easy to repair any damage happen uh, during the usage of uh, the constru uh, constructed uh, building. Um, uh, 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 it could be, but it is not easy to repair it and to maintain it again to the uh, original status. And, uh, and it's not easy also to apply plaster and paint for this surface because it's very neat and smooth. On the other hand, in contendory, uh, uh, contendory um, the stabilized compressed uh, earth blocks when we, uh, we look at the special advantage for it, it is in contrast totally to rammed earth. It is very easy to make a test for random sample because you are dealing with just a brick. You can take a brick 
a random break during the uh, production process from a site, and you go uh, directly to the laboratory and uh, apply all the tests required for this sample. And it's uh, too easy to make uh, 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 on-site quality control. Uh, the, uh, quality, uh, the quality control uh, 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 inspector could uh, easily neglect or to uh, 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 take any samples uh, which is not a, uh, uh, a beer apparently uh, being in a good condition or something like that and, and remove it. For, uh, and, and it's very easy because once you get the, uh, uh, the break, you can control uh, and you can judge about it. And uh, it is very suitable for cur curved roofs because here again, you are dealing with just a block and easy for curing process. Again, uh, you can uh, uh, stack the, uh, all these blocks uh, into groups, maybe 200 or 300 and cover it with assembled plastic sheets. And you can reuse these pla plastic sheets uh, uh, over and over again and requires an average scaled uh, labor. Uh, and it has wide range of uh, forms and dimensions and we will see in the next slide uh, because we are just casting the material into a metal uh, form and, and this uh, metal form could be uh, with uh, any different dimensions, with uh, any different shapes you, you need it. And easy to apply plaster uh, because you have the courses and uh, you don't have this that neat continuous service. So either you, you could leave it as it is without any plaster, a facade brick, or you may uh, have a plaster and painting on it. And it is suitable for community development and business plan. And this is a very important point, really, because uh, when you are, uh, you are dealing with a local community, you could uh, uh, ask people, you can train people to produce these uh, bricks. And uh, these bricks could be a sort of business product. They can sell it and they can, uh, uh, they can get money for that. Um, in contradiction, the, the, the special disadvantage of this technique, it is, uh, unfortunately, it is less aesthetic than the rammed earth. We don't have this magnificent uh, uh, surface. And uh, it requires uh, more labor force. And this second disadvantage, by the way, it could be an advantage. When we are dealing with the uh, the communities which uh, has uh, a lot of people jobless, uh, so it, it could uh, turn into to be a, a job for those people. So uh, 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 maybe it, uh, uh, somehow you, you consider it as a disadvantage or uh, an advantage. Here we have the variety of shapes with, that we could have for this uh, product interlocking hollow blocks, even pavements, round uh, cubes, uh, lentils. You can produce anything you would like. It is, it's a matter of the uh, form, shape, and dimensions. There are a plenty of machinery worldwide producing compressed earth blocks, starting from the manual presses, simple hydraulic presses, uh, a full uh, production lines. Uh, like this in India, in Oroville in India. Uh, 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 mobile uh, machines, which means that you can produce it on site easily. You can just drag it to where you would like to construct your building. And we produced the, uh, those machines in Egypt locally. And this is another a good uh, aspect of this technology that uh, the, the machines of this uh, technology is not sophisticated and you can produce it uh, lo locally. Uh, it doesn't need a sophisticated process. It, it, it is, I call it intermediate technology. And we, we produce it locally in Egypt with our uh, labor uh, force and our local materials. We produce the full 
machines of, uh, to produce the uh, compressed earth block. Uh, maybe uh, I, 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 I really, uh, when I, I saw the presentation yesterday and I saw most of uh, the uh, presenters focusing on Adobe, I said, okay, I'm, I should show them uh, a little bit more about the uh, CEP production process. So, um, before we start as any uh, earth construction technique, we have to understand the soil well. We have to understand it from the uh, physical and the chemical point of view. We have to make some analysis. The, there is two main tests we have to apply it for the soil. The first one is, we call it the soil texture. It means the grain size distribution. Uh, and uh, for sure, this grain size distribution varies from a uh, place to another, from a soil, to an a soil uh, type to another soil type. And according to this uh, 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 test, we take a decision if we will use the soil as it is, or we may make some modifications for this soil later on. The second most important uh, test we have to apply it for our soil is the X-ray analysis. The X-ray diffraction analysis, it is a quantita uh, qualitative, not quantitative test. We have to apply it to understand what type of clay minerals that we have. And this will help us to uh, define what type of stabilizer we are going to use to enhance the uh, soil property. And the uh, stabilizer issue will come next slides to explain it for you. We have, the, 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 there are so many, so many stabilizers available to stabilize your soil and to increase your uh, soils uh, 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 properties. The first and the most widely used and uh, the oldest one is it is historical stabilizer since Roman uh, time. It is the uh, hydrated lime. Lime which is uh, the uh, calcium hydroxide because uh, I have to say it in, in chemical definition because it has so many uh, 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 commercial names in different countries. So I'm talking about the calcium hydroxide. It is scientifically uh, uh, proven really, and low uh, uh, economic and cost and moderate environmental impact and excellent material that could, could achieve uh, with it a, a, a high performance of uh, mechanical development for your soil. The second uh, stabilizer is the cement. And also it is widely used and uh, also it is scientifically uh, proven and uh, but it has uh, it has a, a, a negative environmental impact. We know the the problems of uh, 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 pollution comes behind the uh, cement industry and also it gives a, a good results a good mechanical uh, results. The uh, uh, third one is the uh, uh, magnesium hydroxide, uh, which is uh, commercially known that uh, with the name of magnesium milk. And this this stabilizer is it is uh, recently under research because there is some uh, disadvantage of using hydro, uh, calcium hydroxide and magnesium hydroxide. Uh, mean to uh, uh, develop and overcome these disadvantages because it has an ability to secure the, uh, the mixture with maximum uh, pH uh, value and it reacts uh, uh, very quickly uh, and sufficiently with the uh, clay minerals and, uh, and this, this is uh, a crucial reaction really. Uh, it is the Brusselanic reaction. Uh, so it is still under uh, research. The fourth uh, stabilizer is the gypsum. Actually, I'm sorry to say that gypsum, it is, gypsum, it is not 
sufficient uh, scientifically uh, proven yet. We don't know exactly what type of chemical reactions that uh, uh, happen when you uh, add gypsum to uh, soil that contains a clay component. We, we don't know exactly. Uh, so this is why I say it is, uh, it is not scientifically uh, proven yet, but it was used, but it is not widely spread by the way. And uh, if you would like to search over the internet, you will find, uh, you will find little, little, uh, very few papers uh, talking about gypsum as a soil stabilizer. And what I mean by gypsum, the chemical formula, it is uh, uh, calcium sulfate. And, and also, uh, we, 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 we used it in, uh, in the recent research here in Fatah Sultan Mehmed University. And uh, it, uh, it, it was uh, disappointing uh, to us to see that it has no effect on the uh, water resistance at all. This is the equation, uh, sorry, this is the, uh, how lime stabilization uh, react, uh, reacts with the uh, clay minerals. And it, it passes through two stages. The first one, I call it the short, uh, short term is uh, uh, the carbonation, the fertilization, uh, agglomeration. And then and, uh, we have the most important reaction. It, this reaction takes long, long time to be uh, 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 done, uh, occurred. Uh, uh, it is the buzulanic reaction. And uh, 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 this buzulanic reaction resulting to have a, a sophisticated formula of uh, silicon, uh, silicon aluminate uh, calcium hydrate. And this, this is a, a type of crystals which, which, which is very strong, by the way. And this is the uh, element which is responsible for increasing the soil uh, strength and durability and water resistance at the same time. Uh, for the cement stabilization, the major element affecting the strength, it comes from this reaction. When we hydrate the uh, tricalcium silicate by adding water, and we got calcium silicate hydrate uh, uh, particles, and again, on long term, again, there is something, uh, the, there is another component in, inside the cement itself. It is the dicalcium silicate when we hydrate it with water during a long time, we again, we have the calcium silicate hydrate. And there are some, some uh, lime lifted from the first reaction. And this lime goes in a cycle with the clay minerals uh, and uh, uh, generating the buzzolanic reaction and again generating uh, and uh, uh, again helps to uh, increase the soil strength du and durability. To see the effect of a stabilization, I'm showing you here uh, uh, from our rec uh, recent research, the, these samples you can see here, it is uh, stabilized by just 6% of cement. Uh, we brought a local soil from uh, east-south uh, part of Turkey, and we subjected for stabilization with cement for uh, just 6%. And you, could you imagine uh, uh, we left it for 24 hours, submerged, fully submerged in water. And this is after 24 hours, fully submerged in water. It didn't dissolve, deteriorated, no. And here, the most worse, that those samples we subjected to dry and wetting cycles, six times. What's dry and wetting cycles? We submerge the samples under water for 24 hours, and after that, we take it to the oven and until we, 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 we increase the heat until we evaporate all the, eliminate all the water 
and it becomes totally dry. And again, we repeat this cycle again. We submerge it in the water and we dry it. We submerge it in water, we dry it. We make it six, uh, six times. This is a very severe test, by the way. Could you imagine this is the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the shape of the samples after all this severe test? This is the uh, photo for the sample before we take it and crush it under uh, the press. And also, when we pressed it, we got, uh, 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 we achieved this amount of bearing capacity. We achieved uh, 44, about 45 kilogram per square centimeter. And this is more than enough. And after all this severe test. On the other hand, this assemble uh, was stabilized with uh, gypsum. We used 8% of gypsum and 2% of lime. After five minutes, it totally dis dissolved. Uh, so uh, this is what I told you, uh, gypsum is not still proven as a stabilizer. Okay, maybe gypsum will increase the uh, bearing capacity of the soil uh, uh, under uh, dry compression only. Uh, uh, in comparison to uh, the non-stabilized samples, gyps gypsum increased the bearing capacity from 25 kilogram per square centimeter to be 45 kilogram per square centimeter. That's it. Under just dry compressor strains. And we, we didn't reach more than 45 kilogram. Very quickly, I'm going to show you how we could produce the compressed earth block. First, we have uh, the uh, sieving. We have to make sieving for the uh, soil to reach the uh, optimum uh, grain size distribution I showed to you before. And then some of lumps uh, needed to be crushed and grinding. And then we make dosing, we add the stabilizer, and we mix with a less amount of water. We just use uh, between 12 to 15, 12 to 15 percent uh, by weight. And uh, this is a dry, moist status. And we press it under the press, and then we take it to the curing area because it needs, it depends, here it depends on the stabilizer you are using. If you are using cement, it is different than you are, uh, the, uh, than when you are using uh, lime as a stabilizer. Uh, this is a video showing you the process, uh, the, the, the last stage of the process. It is a hydraulic uh, press, a simple hydraulic press. Uh, Mr. Al Rafay, uh, we are a little bit uh, late on the program. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll move on. Just a little uh, bit faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, here we have the res random results from uh, a site, and we can see the figures here. It it, it ranges about 100 and 120 kilogram per centimeter square. Again, here uh, from the recent research we done in uh, Fatah Mahmoud University. Uh, here, uh, I, I would like to say that this type of uh, products, we should deal with, with it as a thermal regulator rather a regulator than a, a thermal uh, insulator. Because uh, uh, normally when you press a material in a confined uh, place, you, you are increasing the thermal conductivity. But on the other hand, you are increasing the thermal capacity. And this is a crucial point, by the way. This is the uh, scientific explanation to uh, when we say the earthen uh, buildings, it is warm in the winter and cool in the summer. I'm not going to explain it um, uh, in details. To, uh, I move quickly. Uh, here we have the effect of just using a small amount of cement on uh, the water absorption. And now I, I, I finished talking about the material itself. But 
we should ask ourselves why we are developing these materials and we are dealing with these researches and so on, so on, so on. The, the, the target is, is what? Is it the target to, uh, to have a, a unique architecture form or uh, just using a, well, a wall bearing structure system or building with, uh, or it is a target that we, we should use earth as a construction material or reducing the energy consumption, that's it? No. It, it, above all this, we are, the, my, my belief that we are, for, uh, uh, f, uh, uh, we have to create an appropriate architecture. This architecture is, which is honestly responding to the users, the life features, the, their as, uh, aspects, their, uh, 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 their culture, their economical and social and technical uh, aspects and features. I, I really feel that we are as architects, we are like this chess player. He should think about a lot of uh, dimensions and a lot of uh, titles affecting uh, his uh, process. These titles and these di uh, uh, dimensions that controlling the, the architecture design, which is appropriate, I concluded in these seven uh, titles, the human so, and socio-cultural, the economical, the environmental, the technical, and uh, um, uh, the model and development, and the infrastructure and the legalization. I'm sorry, I'm not going to explain more, maybe further. Okay, what about the, I, I, I talked about just one element of the matrix, the construction material. And now we have to deal with the structural system and the architectural design. Regarding the structural system, as I told you before, we can construct all our buildings with just using of uh, bricks, bricks only. And now I'm going to demonstrate for you that with just bricks, we can uh, cover any space, just bricks. Don't look at the type of brick because we could easily replace with uh, this type of brick, this is a red brick, with any other of bricks, with CEP bricks, with whatever the brick we have. But I would like you to focus on the structural system only. We have domes with big spans. We have different type of domes. We have a flat. Uh, we have uh, uh, square domes. We have intersected vaults. We have something called Jack Arch system, which is composite of uh, segmental vaults standing over uh, steel beams or reinforced concrete uh, ripses. This is the image from inside. We can cover any space, any shape, with just using bricks only. We can make even the staircases. Okay, and finally, we have the uh, building material. We have the structure system. What type of designs we could achieve? These designs. This is a project I, I designed and constructed in Saudi Arabia, and this project is awarded for Hassan Fathi uh, Architecture Award. And also uh, it was nominated twice for uh, Aga Khan uh, International Award. It is a farmhouse located in, uh, in a, a place near to Riyadh city in Saudi Arabia. It was fully constructed by the use of compressed earth block produced locally. And here I'm going to uh, show you some features of this uh, building uh, with uh, the titles. Uh, I say it's like a messages we uh, transmitted for the new generations upcoming in the future. I say beauty does not require high cost to be achieved you can achieve a beauty uh, with, we are using just stones extracted from the local side and we, uh, we constructed by use of compressed earth block. These uh, blocks uh, uh, produced from the local soil of that farm. The second message I say, when you are emerging in nature, 
let um, let it impre impress you and uh, and please you and give it the respect it deserves you 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 are the guest you are uh, you have to uh, give uh, put your ego aside a little bit in front of the natural environment and here uh, my message says that modern buildings may uh, provide us with tremendous uh, potential but fail to make our hearts feel warm and the path uh, to path our souls in peace this is the interior of it is uh, uh, it is very simple uh, 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 you, you you can you can feel uh, intimacy uh, it is very close to your soul um, and here another message says that happiness is not generated by the the uh, the, uh, the place but by the joyful events that space uh, affords and here you can play symphonies with just shadow and light you don't need to exaggerate your forms to uh, to be impressive just use the tools, the architecture tools uh, between your hands. Um, you you play with the lights, okay? And uh, uh, I have just few, Mr. few, uh, just a few, yes, <laughs> just few, uh, okay? I will move it quickly. Uh, behind Here we our have some. schedule. Okay, okay. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for giving me this chance. I'm sorry for uh, taking much more than uh, I have at that time. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, very interesting uh, speech. Uh, I think in nowadays, uh, while we have this uh, terrible pandemic and like global warming and all these uh, things that threaten the uh, human beings, it's very important to uh, use earthen materials which are uh, like uh, more sustainable and uh, less uh, they have less threatening effects for the environment uh, so uh, thank you for your very interesting uh, lecture uh, we were thank very you so much here about it uh, and uh, congratulations for your interesting design uh, of the house uh, thank I you. liked it uh, <laughs> thank you